Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you another walkthrough, this time in Presto Photos' brand new Apple Photos extension editor. If you don't know who Presto Photo is, I feature them many times in my previous reviews. They are a company in the United States and they specialize in, in a huge variety of photo books. They have the biggest size selection I've ever seen anywhere and they have lots of lots of cover options and many design tools so you can do the photo books from PDFs, from a phone app, from their website and you can also now create it from Apple Photos. If you liked Apple Books before then you probably know that Apple is no longer doing any print products including photo books and after they seized the print business, the print side of the business, Presto Photo came to the rescue and started producing Apple style photo books so you could print your Apple books in the same style with the same materials as Apple used to make them so um, you know if you like your photo books to look all the same on the shelf then you could continue doing that. The editing process was done in the Presto Photo Editor which is online or you could also use uh, Adobe or any other external editor and they also had an Apple Pages template thing before, but now they created a brand new extension to Apple Photos, so you don't actually have to leave your library uh, when you want to create one of these books. The extension works very easily. You have to go to the Apple Store and download the latest version of the Presto Photo app, and then when you load up the next time the Photos app, it's going to come up automatically as an extension, and you can create the book right there within the app, press order, and bang your book is done. So in this very short walkthrough tutorial I'm going to show you how the new app works, what are the things you can do, uh, what the buttons are for and what's the easiest way to create a photo book. It's an amazing little editor and it also includes an AI algorithm which if you don't know what it is it's the new thing in the photo book world where um, the new apps are capable of um, analyzing your photos and learning through it and trying to put them in a nice order, pictures belonging to the same scene. So it's basically like a second human brain which is capable of learning and making sure that the books look as best as they can. I'm going to go into photos now to show you the extension, how it works uh, and hopefully that's going to give you a nice idea of what you can do in the app and if you have any questions regarding the extension hopefully they should be answered now. If you haven't done it already make sure to go into the Apple Store or the App Store and download the latest version of Presto Photo. So this is the first thing you need to do before you can start or load up the extension. This is the one here which is the newest one now. Make sure to install it and then you have to go into your Apple Photos app here and I show you how you can uh, get into the editor. So you have to select uh, a number of photos. Um, the best thing is to put them into an album or into your favorites. I always find that's the easiest way to manage your photos. And I have all these pictures here from Dublin in my favorites album. I'm going to select them all, which you can do by pressing Command A, or you can just drag them in like this. You have to right click on any of the photos, go to the Create option, create a book, and then here all the available extensions are going to show up. So I'm going to click on Presto Photo. And then here you can see the three orientations for the book. We've got landscape, square and portrait. So I'm going to go into my landscape for this one. And here you have the complete size selection for landscape books. As you can see, there are quite a few sizes from mini nine by six inches all the way up to 14 by 11 inches. And you can always see which sizes are Apple compatible. So for example, 11 by 8.5 is Apple compatible, which means that if you go for this book, you can choose the Apple binding method, which is going to use the same materials as Apple used to use, and it's going to look the same, and it's gonna have the same effect as the Apple books. So if you want to carry on creating Apple books, make sure to choose one which is Apple compatible. If you just want a photo book, from your uh, Photos app, but you don't really care if it looks the same as Apple or not, then you can choose any of these sizes. So I'm gonna go Create, and here you can see the startup for the editor. So here on the left side, you have your available templates, and here we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight templates, which are supposed to resemble the Aperture templates. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have a lot more coming soon, but since the app is really new, these are the ones you can choose at the moment. Now, let me just show you how they look. On the right side here, you can have a little preview of the available um, layouts inside the theme. And you can also see that the 
the artwork used is very similar to what Apple used to use. So it all looks very, very uh, familiar to me. And then let me just choose the gallery for this one. Now, another important part of this before you click the select template is to have a look here at the top of this editor. So first of all, it's going to show you how many photos you've got selected. And then it's going to ask you how many pages you want the book to be. So I can put 20 pages here and then it's asking me how many maximum images I want to have per page. So you have nine plus uh, starting from one. And this is a very good tool if you don't want your book to be overcrowded. So if you don't like layouts which have nine, 10 pictures on one page, then you can set the maximum here. And if your page number is too small for the amount of photos, then you'll see what happens next. So then here you've got the auto flow images, which is basically your automatic photo book creator. If you have this sticked, then the book is going to be created automatically and the pictures are going to be inserted into the layouts. If you don't have this sticked, then you're still going to load up all of these layouts, but you have to drag the photos into each um, photo box individually and manually. Then you've got smart placement, which basically is a feature where um, the app analyzes all your pictures and makes sure that you don't have nearly identical photos next to each other. So it's going to basically exclude some of the photos that look too similar and choose the best one, the one which is the sharpest, the one which is most in focus, the one which has the best white balance, you know. I don't know how exactly the algorithm works, but it's an AI algorithm. So it looks through all your pictures, analyzes them and makes sure that the book looks as best as it can. So I'm going to keep all of these ticked because I want to create an automatic book. And then I'm going to click on select template. And now the book is being made for me. So you just have to wait a couple of minutes here. Now also remember that photos works in two different ways. You can either have all your pictures on the Mac or you can have your pictures in the cloud. If the pictures are in the cloud, you have to wait a little bit for them to download. Uh, if they are local on your computer, it's going to be a lot faster. So just bear that in mind. If you, if you notice that the app is slowing down a little bit, it means that the photos are being downloaded from the cloud. Uh, here are my layouts. So I can click through all my pages in the sidebar here. In the main editor view, I can see a selected page and I can edit it. Now, I think it would be nice to see both pages here, but at the moment you can only see one. It's not the end of the world because it's not a lay flat book, but because Presto allows you to create lay flat books, I think it would be um, ideal to see both pages here. It um, put my photos nicely together. So you can see these ones kind of match in color and scene, and then it puts one portrait on each side. So I quite like how it's using the photos. Again, it saw that these two pictures were both um, landscape photos, so it put them together. So as you can see, the AI algorithm works quite well. Now let's see what else we can do here. So we've got the layouts here on the side. You can add pages, you can delete pages, and you can also duplicate pages with this button here. So if you want to duplicate a layout, then you have a refresh, which reloads basically all your pages. And then here you can add an image, add title, add caption, and add paragraphs. So if you want to add anything else to the layout that you haven't found in the template, then you can add uh, extra elements. Here in the right side, you can change the background color. So you've got quite a wide variety of uh, colors that match nicely. Black or white obviously is what Apple would use, probably white. So I'm just going to keep it white for now. And then you can edit the layout. And in this feature, you can basically change the sizes and things like that. So I can make this one smaller. I can move it all about. So you have lots of freedom here in the edit option. So I'm going to go back to this. And then here you can zoom in your picture inside the frame. If we come to the bottom side here, first we see all our images and you've got two options. You can either show all the pictures or you can see just the unplaced ones. You can also uh, select them by time, so by hour, by day, and then the photos are going to show just for that specific time period. You can uh, go through all of this and then obviously you can just drag photos into the layout. You can move it, you can zoom it, you can do many, many things. If you go to the templates option here, then you're going to see all the available templates in this gallery theme. So first of all, here you've got numbers which show you the templates with the uh, number of photos on them. So if I select number three, then it's going to show me all the templates which have three photos on. If I click on it, it automatically changes my layout and puts uh, three pictures onto the page. 
I can also select two and one, and then it's going to give me a bit more options here for one, two, and three, but you can select just three. Now you've also got an option here which says with text. If I click on that, then I can see that there are no templates which have three photos and text, but if I unclick that, then I can see that I've got a few pages here which have text as well. So I can go for this one, which has a title and a paragraph. I can go for that one. I can go for a full uh, uh, story page and so on. And then I can also see here options for covers. And these are the available cover options that you can choose in this specific theme. If you go into the gallery tab here, then you can change the layouts from the different themes. Say if I go to photo collage and select this template, then the good thing about this is that you can mix and match between templates uh, within the same project. So I don't need to have the same layouts from one template. I can select this layout from this theme and for a different page, I can select from the gallery theme. So you can mix and match between the available templates. Here, when you go to choose theme, you can basically redo the whole book with uh, one click. So if I go on OK and I select a different theme, maybe the black one here, which one had the text? This one here, the photo essay select is going to reflow my whole book. And now I can see a completely different layout and everything has been placed in for me again. Now, again, if you think that your book is too busy or there are too few photos, then again, you can go to choose template and change the parameters here at the top. So you can make uh, the pages have more photos or less. You can add extra pages. So if I make this now 40 pages long, well, I can't because I only have 37 images, but if I make it 31 pages long, then it's going to put more full page photos into my book because now I have extra pages to fill. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of little tools in the AI algorithm. So if you don't want to do things manually, you've got lots of very handy options here that can create the book with many parameters to make sure that it looks good, it's not too crowded, it's not too empty, and the pictures match nicely. Let me show you just a few more little options here. So if I come back to this uh, page here and I select a template, from contemporary and if I go into the text option I can type in Dublin and then here are my options for the text so you've got lots of lots of fonts to choose from basically all the fonts from your computer so it's not app dependent it depends on your computer you've got size um, title body caption orientation spacing and lists so you can even create lists and um, those sort of things so you've got a lot of control over the text option and then you can obviously add uh, an extra image you can add uh, a title which is going to be a stronger text and paragraph so these are all the things you can do and again with the images you can just drag them into the placeholders and now you can see it's automatically changing my page because I added a new picture. If I drag one more in, it's again automatically redoing the whole thing. So there's an auto layout function and this is happening because I've got this magic stick um, ticked in the bottom. So if I take this off and I put a photo on, it's not going to do anything. But if I press this button, it's going to automatically uh, change my layout and add the photos and rearrange them. So this is like your magic tool, which um, helps you with the dragging. So you don't have to make sure that everything is lined up. You don't have to use the, the guidelines, but if you want to do it manually, you have the option to. So these were the main features in the app. I think uh, it's quite easy to use. As you can see, there are lots of very handy automatic tools which can speed up the process and the AI algorithm works really well. I like it. Again, the editor is quite simple in the way that it doesn't give you um, embellishments and lots of frames and it wants to keep the book nice and simple, minimalistic like Apple used to be. And when you're finished editing your book in the very end, all you have to do is click on buy now here and then it's going to upload your pages. You can preview the book for the last time here, uh, make sure everything looks fine. And then you go to checkout and then here you've got the available options. So 29 available products for this kind of layout that we created here. We can have, uh, we can look by, by popular sizes, all sizes, bindings and paper. So let's see it by binding. So we can have the 11 by 8.5 in a die cut hardcover. We can have it in an image wrap hardcover with 
150 premium photo paper and also luster 200 photo paper and silk 120 we can have a soft cover image wrap we can have a lay flat book which is going to be velvet 250 hinged we can have a lay flat leather hardcover book which i think is quite new because last time there was no leather cover so 11 by 8.5 inches and we can also have seamless lay flat hardcover and we can have unbound loose pages if you want to put it into scrapbooking or something like that. And very important in the bottom, the printing extras, you've got Apple style binding and you have to click this if you want your book to look like an Apple book because when you click this option, your book is going to be made with the same materials as Apple used to make their books. You can also have a matte lamination if you want. It says if possible, so I think with this size it should be fine then add to cart, shipping cord and pay for your order. I hope you found my little uh, walkthrough interesting and helpful. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments box underneath the video or you can email Presto Photo. I'm sure they'll be happy to help you. If you want to see any of my other Presto Photo uh, reviews, then you can again find links to those in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.